Thank you. Yes, I know, you might have to move. Um, so anyways, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what we're gonna basically do is we have covered how to graph, thank you, Jake. We have covered how to graph equations, all right? And when we're solving a system equation by graphing, that's basically all we are doing, concerned with, is graphing each one of these equations separately. Um, so one thing I want you guys to notice is, you know, both these equations, um, actually, both these equations are in slope-intercept form, which is perfect, right? Because when it's in slope-intercept form, we know what the slope is and we know what the y-intercept is, right? B is our y-intercept, which is the coordinate point 0, comma b, meaning it's going to be on the y-axis. And m is our slope, which is the ratio between the change in the y-coordinates over the change in the x-coordinates between any two points, which sometimes we'll also refer to as rise over run, all right? Um, However, sometimes we have equations that are sometimes we have equations that are not in slope intercept form. For instance, what if this equation in your homework looked like this? y minus 2x minus 6, or y minus 2x equals negative 6. Well, remember, ladies and gentlemen, to rewrite it in slope intercept form, you'd have to solve for the y. So you would just add 2x to both sides, and you get y equals 2x minus 6. All right, so just to note, when you guys do your homework, just to note, when you guys do your homework, not all of the problems are going to be in slope-intercept form. You might have to rewrite them in slope-intercept form. Okay. So now let's get into how to graph these. So basically, um, what we're going to do is we have an x and a y-axis. I have extra graph paper if you guys need it. But here's your y-axis. Here's your x-axis. And basically, what we're going to do Basically, what we're going to do is um, plot the y-intercept first. So here is my y-intercept, which is 0, comma 1. So I go 0 on the x-axis, 1 on the y-axis. I plot the points. The next thing that I'm going to do is now identify the slope. And one thing I want you guys to understand is negative 2 over 3 is equal to 2 over negative 3. But it is not equal to negative 2 over negative 3. So when you have a negative slope, when you have a negative slope, put the negative sign either in the numerator or in the denominator. All right? Don't leave it out in front, because a lot of times that can be confusing. Put it either in the numerator or denominator. They're the same. Think of maybe take some numbers you guys know. Negative 4 divided by 2 is equal to 4 divided by negative 2. They both give you an answer of negative 2. But negative 4 over negative 2 equals positive 2. Right? The negatives turn to positive. So, when you have a negative, don't make that negative 2, negative 3. Just put it in one or the other. And I'll show you why it doesn't matter. Let's say we're going to graph this. Remember, as I said, slope is the change in the y-coordinates over the change in the x-coordinates. So if the change in the y-coordinates is negative 2, that means I'm going to go down 2 units. If the change in the x-coordinates is positive 3, that means I'm going to go to the right 3 units. So I go down 2 to the right 3. And that's how I find my next point. If you chose this as your slope, then you'd go the change in the y-coordinates is positive 2, and the change in the x-coordinates is negative 3. So you'd go up to negative 3. And what I want you guys to understand is it doesn't matter if you go up to the left or down to the right. You still produce a line. You still produce a line that's going to be exactly the same. All right. OK, so where did I lose you? Do you understand how to plot the y-intercept at 0, comma 1? So now you have your slope. You need to find another point. So the slope, as I mentioned, you can either write negative 2 thirds as negative 2 over 3 or 2 over negative 3. It doesn't matter. What slope represents is the change in the y-coordinates over the change in the x-coordinates. So if the change in the y-coordinates is negative 2, from your y-intercept, you go down 2 units. If the change in the x-coordinate is positive 3, you go to the right 3 units. So from my y-intercept, I go down 2 to the right 3. OK? okay? Yes? So now we've got to graph the second one. Yep, we're going to do the exact same thing. I'll explain. I haven't, I haven't got to that part. Now. 
I did make up this problem. It's so um, one, two, over one. OK, I did make up the problem, so I actually made a mistake in my mind. So we're going to change that to minus 7. Sorry. All right, so now let's do the next line. So we graphed the first line right there. Now let's do the next one. The y-intercept here is 0, comma, negative 7. So now you go down to negative 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Does everybody see how I plotted the y-intercept? If you're not looking up here, it makes it more confusing. Negative 7. I plotted it on the y-intercept. Does everybody understand to plot the y-intercept? Yes. Now it's your question. Yeah. So now this slope is not a fraction, right? You guys agree that this 2 is not in a fraction form. So we can write it as a fraction form as 2 over 1. So now the change in the y is positive 2. So from my y-intercept, I go up 2. The change in the x is positive 1. Up 2 over 1. And then I can continue that up to again over 1. You don't have to, but I'm going to explain why I'm doing this. Then you can do it again, up 2 over 1. If you keep on doing it, notice how all these, lines are on this, all these points are on the same line, right? The reason why I'm doing that is because I, the, the, the homework that you're doing is not graph two lines. That's not what the homework is. Your homework is to graph the system of equations and determine the solution. So the solution of a system of equations is when we have two or more equations is where the two lines intersect. So you guys can see that they intersect at a point, right? That point is 1, 2, 3, negative 1. So when I ask you for the solution, that is the solution. OK? The point where they intersect is the solution. Now, you also are going to have to describe the type of system. So you're definitely going to want to write this down. If you have a point where they intersect, you have a solution. This is what we call a consistent system. And it is independent. If you don't write this down, you're going to forget it. OK? I'm going to do three examples for you. Consistent, independent, and the point is your solution. Make sense? Yep, exactly. That's exactly what you're going to do. Now, not always, though, are you guys 